I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening um, for uh, the Burlington Democratic Party's nominating caucus. It's our first chance in the year of 2020 to uh, exercise our right to vote, our right to choose our nominees for our party. And I think that uh, all of your participation tonight deserves a round of applause. So. haven't met me or don't know me yet, my name is Sam Donnelly. Uh, I'm the chair of the Burlington Democratic Party. Um, I was elected in September at our reorganization process, and I'm, again, really thankful for you all being here. Um, I'm going to quickly go over the caucus rules, and if you have any questions or clarifications, I ask that you find your ward chair afterwards, uh, or me, uh, myself afterwards, and direct questions through me. Uh, first things first, uh, we'll hear from myself. Uh, our Majority Leader, Jill Krowinski, and our Mayor, yes. <laughs> and, our, and our Mayor, Moreau Weinberger. Uh, prior to that, I'll give a little bit more instruction as to where uh, you should go if you're from a certain ward, um, where other wards will be, so just uh, hold on to those questions. Uh, as far as the process, once you're within your wards, all the ward chairs uh, should have these rules, but I'm happy to clarify things with them as well. Um, they will start out by uh, welcoming you all, and then they'll open up the first uh, round of nominations for uh, the city council uh, seats that are up this March. Now, if a candidate let the party know uh, ten day, uh, by noon, 10 days before uh, this caucus, then they will already have been nominated and do not need a nomination from the floor, and you can proceed with their five-minute speech. Uh, as well as a, a vote, uh, a voice vote following that introduction and question period. Uh, again, please, if you have any more clarifications, uh, come find me or your ward chair at the end. Prior to that, they will move on to ward clerks. Uh, same process, there can be nominations on the floor if there was no prior nominations given to the party. Uh, and then inspector of elections uh, after that same process. Uh, and then they will have a chance to re-elect their ward chair uh, and ward committee after that. But that will be the end of voting. Um, I want to clarify a couple things uh, when it comes to who is eligible. Um, the first is that uh, the Progressive Party had their caucus on December, someone know the date, third, second, 12th? No one knows. Okay. Fourth. December. Fourth. In December. And if you voted at that caucus, you absolutely cannot also vote in this caucus. It would be similar to voting uh, twice in a primary, and it would nullify the vote um, if you did that. I've asked my ward chairs to make that clear um, to you all when we break up into wards as well. Uh, the other thing that I want to clarify is that if you were not registered when you walked into this building uh, and you registered at the door, uh, you can vote, or you can register to vote, uh, or you can vote today, sorry. Um, and that vote will count just as if you were registered yesterday. Uh, we have same-day registration policy in our state, which I think is a great, great law to have. Yep. And, and there's no reason, in my opinion, as chair, that that shouldn't apply to our nominating caucus, uh, as it is an important part of the, the democratic process. Um, the other question I received a fair amount was whether or not non-citizens could vote in our nominating caucus this year. Um, as uh, one of our own city councilors, Councilor Roof, uh, introduced the city council this year, uh, there will be an opportunity for us as Burlingtonians to vote on non uh, all citizen, all resident voting this March. And I really hope that all of us in this room uh, vote to pass that measure. Um, yeah. And once that passes, I hope to pass an amendment to the Burlington Democratic bylaws that say that non-citizens can vote in our, our uh, caucus as well, or all residents can vote in our caucus as well. Um, so with that, I'd like to hand it off uh, to our House Majority Leader, Jill Krowinski. Thank you, Jill. with all of you while we're speaking. I want to thank Sam and Joanna and the group for organizing this caucus today. It does take a lot of work to organize the meals and childcare, which is really important, so let's give them a big round of applause. So as Democrats, we want to create a Vermont that works 
for everyone, not just the wealthy few. A Vermont where our families and communities can thrive and where the Vermont dream is accessible to everyone. Your, your Democrats in the legislature, I'm being inclusive, House and Senate members, have been working really hard to pass these policies to help families and create a level playing field. Last session, we invested in affordable child care and workforce development. We invested in broadband to help our economy. We created a funding source, a long-term funding source for clean water, and we passed the strongest reproductive rights bill in the country. We have so much to be proud of. In the coming weeks, we are gonna be sending two bills to the governor's desk. We're gonna be sending a bill that makes paid family and medical leave part of every job in Vermont, and we're gonna give hardworking Vermonters a raise with a minimum wage increase. We are gonna to continue to do our work to combat, to combat climate change, and we are gonna build a strong future for the next generation so that they have a clean environment. We have much to do and we are already hitting the ground running with that. Last week, the governor gave his State of the State address. And the State of the State address is basically an outline of the priorities um, that we're gonna be seeing in the governor's budget later this month. And I have to tell you, my friends, this budget was short on vision and it was short on details. He signaled that he was going to be pushing back against some of the climate change legislation that we're moving forward, and he wants to spend more money on paying people to move to Vermont. I don't think that's a sound economic development policy. Do you? No. no. So that's why these upcoming elections are so, so critical. If we're going to give every Vermonter a fair shot. We need a new governor. And we need allies across the state, up and down the ballot, to do this work and move our agenda forward. So I just want to thank all of you for coming here tonight. We have a big, big campaign ahead of us in 2020, and I know together we can win. So thank you so much for everything. I am supposed to be turning it back over to Sam. Yes, sorry, I was on the wrong end of the road. Um, so thank you, Jill, and I think that the the state legislature is doing excellent work. Um, you know, there's a lot of work to be done in Vermont. As a young person myself, and as a lifelong Vermonter, I want to see a lot of progress made. Um, and I think that we have the right legislators and the right leadership to make that progress uh, this session and, and forward. Um, the the last speech of the night uh, before I give some more instructions is one that I think is really, really important to hear. Um, it's from our mayor, Moreau Weinberger. So, Moreau. Given, uh, given some of my best uh, speeches from school, so I'm going to try to do this from here and get a little hey move. Um, welcome, everyone. It is awesome to have such a big crowd at the City Caucus Council Democratic Caucus. I want a special thing. Sam, Joanna, Lorraine, who I've done the heavy lifting to skill set, but all of the different together for the successful caucus. Um, I also want to give a special shout out and welcome to the newest member of the team, um, Asha Car Carroll, who's right here. Um, Asha has just joined the state party as the new field director, and she is going to be focused on city council races for much of the next couple couple months. We're really excited to be here. Welcome. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm talking as loud as I can, but if you guys can crowd in this way, there's a little there's a lot more space in here. The um, so I also want to say thank you to. Uh, the person who makes it possible for, for me to be involved in this, I want to say thank you to my wonderful wife, Stacy, and our daughter, Ada, who's here. I want to say thank you to Abby Duke and Sure Snap for providing the great food tonight. And uh, so, as we head into this election season, the 2020 election season, we, the, the Burlington Democrats, have a lot to be proud of. 
we, since the last municipal election, just a year ago, you know, we do this every year, um, because of the leadership of city Democrats, we have hit some major milestones. We've been upgraded two steps to the AA credit rating, making good on the promise that we made to voters eight years ago when the voters put us in charge to fully restore the city's financial standing. And in doing so, we have locked in literally tens of millions of dollars of savings for Burlington voters, for school uh, funders, and for ratepayers. completed the third season in a row following the 2016 vote um, on uh, the November ballot to support the sustainable infrastructure bond. For the third year in a row, we have built twice as many roads as we do in a typical season. We have built three times as many sidewalks as we ha have done historically. And we really essentially for the first time ever have been replacing the city's water lines and starting to make the major investments needed in our other water infrastructure. We ended the BT crisis for good. Again, saving another tens of millions of dollars for taxpayers, ensuring high-speed internet choice for many years to come. We continue to lead the state in, any, in many ways the country with respect to the opioid epidemic, delivering on the ground change and results, I am heartwarmed to say that for the second year in a row, it appears that the number of opioid related overdose deaths is about 50% of what it was in its peak. It's still way too high, but we are making progress. And in 2019, we passed the milestone of opening the 900th new home since the beginning of this administration. 300 of those homes are permanently affordable. And in top of that, not only have we created these new homes for literally hundreds of households in this community, we are starting to see that we have, we're starting to see numbers confirming that this strategy of creating as many homes as possible for all, all, all incomes and for all types of Burlingtonians is starting to have the effect that you would want. We are seeing a doubling, we have seen a doubling of the vacancy rate, and we have seen housing inflation level off, and it's actually been lower for most of the last few years than the overall inflation rate. Again, nowhere near where we want to be, but a big, but big progress. And it isn't just what we accomplished in 2020. When you're, we, in the months leading up to these elections, City Democrats have come forward with initiatives that point the way to the future and how we make progress on the major challenges that continue to exist. How we continue to make progress with housing, with how we continue to make progress on the climate emergency and the opioid crisis. Following two housing summits in June and September, uh, there have been a series of housing reforms that have been put forward that together represent the most significant comprehensive housing agenda in many years. These reforms include doubling the annual investment of local funds into the housing trust fund, eliminating barriers to creating and creation of new homes throughout the city, reducing utility costs for tenants by requiring all Burlington rental apartments to be properly weatherized, and additional new tenant education and protection efforts, in part based on the input of the tenants' union and more. <laughs> also in the fall, building on a record of in 2014 becoming the first city in the country to source 100% of our electricity from renewable generation, we released a new net zero energy city plan that has us getting to essentially zero emissions across the electricity, ground transportation, and thermal sectors by 2030. It is, in short, the most ambitious local climate initiative of any effort in the country. And I want to be clear, it wasn't just a plan. It, it was accompanied with the new roadmap where literally more than a dozen of new initiatives and uh, programs for starting to create on-the-ground change towards that ambitious goal. 
And finally, in November, I laid out a set of initiatives to define the next chapter of the fight against the opioid crisis, a chapter that must be based on cities and the state increasing support for long-term recovery. You know, as this election season has gotten underway, you know, something a little bit surprising has, has happened in recent weeks. Um, we've seen candidates coming forward running against Democratic incumbents who are listing housing, the environment, climate change, and addic addiction supports as their top issues. And, you know, in a sense, this is very positive. We welcome the progressives joining us in this urgent work. We welcome this confirmation that Democrats have been focused on the right issues for, for years. And it is good for Burlington that both major parties are aligned on these critical generational issues. However, you know, when rhetoric, ideology, and a desire to take credit get in the way of moving forward the needed reforms, that's not so positive. It's our job, people in this room, the Democratic Party's job, to make sure voters understand that Democrats have been putting forward well-crafted policies that address the root causes of these challenges, implementing them, and delivering tangible results. It's our job here in this room to demonstrate to voters that to secure additional real change, to make housing more affordable, to fight the climate emergency, and maintain our outstanding quality of life, we must elect more Democrats to the City Council. And that is really why tonight's gathering is critical. Tonight we must nominate candidates who will work with Democrats in our commitment to housing, quality of life, affordability, a strong economy, uh, with well-compensated workforce, climate action, public health and safety, and it is important that we nominate candidates who can communicate to voters our city's remarkable recent progress and the importance of continuing that forward momentum. It's also critical that tonight we start the huge grassroots efforts that it's going to take for these candidates to win in March, and that's why it's so encouraging to see a full room like this. And finally, tonight we must put on the ballot a slate of Democratic candidates who deliver ambitious yet practical and affordable solutions, build on the progress of recent years, and ensure that the great city of Burlington continues to move forward in 2020 towards a more inclusive, equitable, healthier, and sustainable future. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Moreau. Uh, I appreciate the words and all the work that you uh, put into making this city um, a better place for all of us uh, to live in. I know in my lifetime, uh, I've seen this tremendous change in the way that uh, the city grows, the way the city um, looks, and I, I, I appreciate it. So thank you. One more round of applause. Please. The fun part of the night, why well, I'm sure you're all here, uh, unless you just came for the speeches, um, we're going to break out into wards, and I would ask that we start with Ward 1, because I, I have a sense that the largest gathering of people is in Ward 1. Um, if you're voting in Ward 1 this evening, I'm going to ask that you uh, go to that corner of the room where Olivia Pena, Olivia, can you wave? Our ward chair is standing, and Olivia is going to uh, take you right above us. To the um, to the gym uh, where we'll need a couple of volunteers to help set up chairs. We weren't planning on using that room, but uh, we're going to move there. For, for other, if you're in one, one, if you could move somewhat quietly, so that board is here. Um, for other wards, I ask that you uh, stay here uh, for just a second, and once the ward one people migrate out, we'll break out into those wards. Uh, with your so you should be Ward 5, so that's where you're going to be. That's great. Look how hot that campaign is.
Back twice if you can hear me. Um, you know, I've been on the like, receiving end of that all throughout elementary and middle school. I never thought I'd be saying that to, to other people. But um, if we can have uh, the Ward 5 voters congregate in this sort of area, Bill Keogh, your ward chair, is uh, over there holding up a 5. Um, if we can have the Ward 6 caucus goers congregate, uh, sorry, Ollie, I'm about to move you. Ward 6 is over there. Um, uh, City Councilor Joan Shannon will be operating that caucus. Uh, if Ward 7 could go in the fourth corner with the orange uh, over there, um, and then Ward 4 uh, in the, the other corner in the blue area, that would be great. Um, ward 2, please, uh, congregate sort of towards me uh, on, on this side, if you can. And Ward 3 will be on the other side. And Ward 8, I'm going to put you guys in the hallway. Woo! Yeah. If you're, if you're lost or confused, just come find me, and I'm more than happy to help.